We meet Grace, a young farm girl in her early 20s. Grace is in a jewelry shop, looking at a wonderful stone. She asks for the price, and the boy on the other side of the counter tells her it's $12,000. Grace then leaves with Tessa, her best friend. Grace has had a long-distance relationship with a guy called Stuart, for 15 months, and that day they are meeting. Grace expects him to slip a ring on her finger. At home, Grace meets her mother, Catherine, and tells her about the stone she saw. While choosing the outfit for the night, they talk about romance, and the mother tells her that waiting for true love is worth it. Then, Grace goes to the fields where Jim, her father, is working, to tell him that she is going out for dinner. The crops are dying, so Grace suggests moving to another place, nearer to Stewart's, but Jim claims that Land is part of the family, and that he would never leave it, because of a college boy. This answer makes the girl upset, so she leaves stomping angrily. The dinner is ready, and the whole family is at the table, except for Grace, who is waiting for Stuart to pick her up. Then, the phone rings, it is Stuart saying that they will meet at the diner, instead of him picking her up. Grace doesn't like this, and neither does her family, but she decides to go anyway. Once in the restaurant, Stuart is with a group of friends, although Grace thought they will be having a date. Besides, Stuart acts stupidly, he doesn't even sit next to Grace, and starts a burping contest with one of the guys there. This situation is uncomfortable and disgusting for Grace, but the worst is about to come. Grace asks Stuart that she thought he has something important to tell her. He then stands up, and announces that he is engaged with one of the girls in the group. Grace feels betrayed and terribly disappointed, so she leaves the place. Back home, Grace tells her parents how she feels, and they state that the Lord kept her away from a great disaster, but she believes that he doesn't want her to get married. While her parents are consoling Grace, her little brother is secretly listening to the whole conversation. The next day, the father is reading the newspaper, and to his surprise, he finds an advertisement for a young girl, looking for a good man. However, Jim instantly realizes that his youngest son has published the ad. At that precise moment, the doorbell rings, first once, and then over and over again. A lot of men have come to ask for Grace's hand, but her father explains to them that there has been a huge mistake. Grace and Tessa meet in the coffee shop, the blonde girl tells Grace that if she wants to have a boyfriend, she will have to get a new wardrobe. She also mentions that bad luck can't last forever, and instead of spending time with her friend, she leaves. Grace heads to the counter, grumpily and orders a latte. The shop assistant is Jared, the guy from the jewelry shop. Jared asks if they know each other, but Grace is only interested in getting her coffee. He then realizes that she is the girl who asked about the ring, and introduces himself, but Grace is even more upset, because Jared reminded Grace of the worst day of her life. When Grace sits at a table, Jared joins her. She doesn't want to be followed. Regardless of what Grace says, Jared sits there, and tries to woo her by saying, that he has seen people falling in love over coffee, and that could also happen to them. Grace smiles and claims that they don't even know each other, so Jared replies that's something he wants to change. Grace smiles again and leaves without saying a word, but Jared keeps following her to outside. Before she leaves, Jared asks for her phone number, and they agree that he will call her. Later, Grace's family goes to visit a new neighbor in the town. The man bought the house that was previously owned by some family friends. Once in the house, we realize that he is Clint Masters, the guy who was burying something in the beginning of the story. Clint is a 28-year-old doctor and says he came there because a spot has opened up in the clinic. Grace's father tells him that he can join them if he hasn't found a good church yet. Back at the Adersons' home, Grace eagerly tells her father she met Jared, who is nice to her, but Jim seems not at all happy. Jim mentions that before they go out, he has to meet Jared, because he doesn't trust him and is concerned about his daughter. Nonetheless, Grace is angry at him and claims that she is not a little girl anymore. In the barn, a businessman willing to buy the land appears, but Jim says his land is not for sale. The businessman knows about the pending default, but Grace's father refuses the offer again and sends the man away. Later, like a real stalker, Jared appears unannounced at Grace's door, instead of calling her first as planned. However, Grace is pleased to see Jared, so invites him to come in to meet her dad. Jared meets both her dad and mom, and although they invite him to stay and talk, Jared says that he is getting a shake and just wanted to swing by to see if Grace could join him. Jim accepts, but with the condition of not being late. In the coffee shop, Jared says he likes Grace's family, he then explains that his parents left him when he was a child. Grace feels touched by this story. Jared claims that he likes to be a free soul, but he may settle down if he finds the right girl, which makes Grace giggles joyfully. They spend the day cheerfully together. Jared takes any chance to lean on Grace and to kiss her, but she isn't comfortable and avoids him. Suddenly, it starts raining while they are sitting on a bench, so they get into Jared's car and he drives to his place. Jared suggests drying themselves inside his house and then coming back to Grace's home, but she doesn't want to get out of the car. Nevertheless, Jared insists until Grace gives up and decides to get into his house. Meanwhile, Jim is telling Catherine that a man made an offer for the land some weeks ago. He explains that although it was enough to get rid of their debts, he refused, because he wants the best for his children. 
But the most important thing is that the parents are extremely worried because the rain hasn't stopped and Grace doesn't answer the phone. Up to this point, the mother believes that there is something wrong with this Jared boy. At that moment, a car arrives at the house and Grace is soaking wet. She gets in and rushes to her bedroom without paying attention to her mother's scoldings. Once in her room, Grace phones her best friend to say that Jared kissed her, but Tessa states that's not a big deal. Grace mentions that she doesn't feel right because that's not what her parents want for her, but Tessa insists that it isn't a big deal, plus she cannot be tied to them forever. Finally, Tessa recommends Grace visit a therapist, and even though she is not fully convinced, Grace agrees because the first session is for free. In the next scene, Grace goes to a therapy session. There she tells the therapist that when she is with Jared, she feels inhibited because he is too physical. She adds that although Jared says sweet things and makes her feel wanted, she feels guilty when touched by him. With the collected input, the therapist claims that Grace is a woman in the search of identity, so she recommends trying a starter marriage. However, Grace disagrees with the therapist. She strongly believes that living with someone before marriage isn't right, so she leaves the session. Back home, Grace is working on a school project, and her little brother accidentally spills a full glass of soda on it. Grace is furious, she says she wished he was not her brother, and the kid goes away. Grace instantly regrets what she said, and chases him. But the little boy gets hit by a car. Fortunately, Dr. Clint is there to assist the little boy, and affirms that he is not hurt. But Grace is still worried and nervous, she comes back to her room, and Catherine follows her. When getting in the bedroom, Grace cries bitterly, not only because of her brother's accident, but also because of what she experienced with Jared. Grace can't take it anymore and confesses to her mother that Jared kissed her and that she felt strange. She also tells her about her visit to the therapist, but Catherine tells Grace that she will love her no matter what. She does and comforts her daughter with a strong hug. Then Grace asks Catherine why love has to be so complicated, to which her mother replies that her father is very wise and he will be able to help her. Catherine and Grace go to the fields, join Jim and explain what's going on. The father forgives Grace and thanks her for being honest. He then claims that, as their parents, they want to protect her and her siblings from having their heart broken and having any regrets. Since Grace doesn't understand, her father gives her a soybean package. He mentions that as the head of the family, he must guide her through marriage. The father adds that he was too busy with his job, that he neglected Grace. He asks her for forgiveness and hugs her sweetly. Finally, Grace opens the package of soybeans, and in it, she finds soybeans and pieces of paper with the following words, romance, character, accountability, preparation, communication, and patience. Jim explains to his daughter, those words are God's seeds to be planted in her life, to be closer to him. He encourages Grace to work on her relationship with her brothers and to stop looking for love, because when the time comes, God will bring love to her. Although Grace is confused, she decides to finish her relationship with Jared by ignoring his phone calls and messages. One day, Grace bumps into Jared outside the library. He is delighted to see her, so he approaches her and asks why she doesn't answer his calls. Grace tells him that she now knows what bothers her about their relationship. Jared's expression completely changes, and Grace says that they aren't right together, so she decided to stop seeing him. Jared laughs nervously because he thinks she is joking. But Grace states she wants to have a clear conscience before the Lord and her parents, and she doesn't feel it is right to have an intimate relationship without being married. Then, Grace affirms that her life is taking a different path, and she intends to experience real long-lasting love. Jared is mad. He believes that their love is real. Before leaving, Grace asks him not to call or come by again. Back home, Grace's little brother apologizes to her for having ruined her school project. She apologizes for her reaction too, and they hug. Then, Grace reads the Bible until she falls asleep. The next day, Clint comes to the Aderson's place and bumps into Grace. The girl thanks him for having assisted her brother on the day of the accident, but Clint is lost in her beautiful face. Grace says that her father is in the barn, so Clint goes there, and Grace looks interestingly at him as he leaves. In the barn, Jim explains to his sons that as the combine is broken, they have to harvest the crops by hand. At that moment, Clint shows up and joins them to help with the job. In a different scene, we see Clint, Catherine, and Jim sitting in the living room. Clint tells them that he wants to start a relationship with Grace, but he is seeking their approval first. The parents appreciate this decision. Jim claims that marriage is a serious thing, that Clint is a man with integrity, and that he believes that Clint would be honorable to Grace and God. Clint is pleased, and he thanks both Catherine and Jim. They shake hands, and Clint then heads to the lake, because Grace is there. With a nervous voice, Clint says he has something important to ask her. Grace listens to him attentively. Clint claims that he enjoyed knowing her during the last months, but he would like to get to know her better, so he asks if she'd like to have a deeper relationship with him, in which both consider the possibility of getting married. Grace tells him that in the past, she would have accepted without hesitation, but now she won't agree without her parents' blessing. At that moment, Clint says he has talked to her parents, and they have already given him their blessing. Clint claims that he will treat her with honor and respect, as she deserves it. 
With a beautiful smile on her face, Grace accepts the proposal, and affirms she would be honored to explore the possibility with him. Clint is really cheerful, from now on, they will spend more time together cooking, playing games, fishing, and fooling around. One afternoon, Grace and her mother are at home baking some cookies, when the doorbell rings repeatedly. They go to see who is there, and they find a blonde woman called Brooke. She is looking for Clint Masters. It turns out, that this lady had been doing some research about Clint's whereabouts. She seems to be obsessed with the doctor, and she got there because of her research. Catherine and Grace welcome her warmly, and invite her inside but she refuses. At that moment, Clint arrives, and from the look on his face, we know this woman is bad news. Clint introduces her as a friend from his hometown, and the whole family welcomes Brooke warmly. The family is kind, so Brooke decides to stay there. Brooke remains in Grace's bedroom, and although Grace tries to be kind to her, Brooke is more interested in her makeup than talking to Grace. Grace asks how she met Clint. To this Brooke answers that they grew up together and dated during college. This is tough for Grace, who feels really sad. Brooke adds that when Clint went to med school, he practically disappeared, so she wanted to meet him to catch up. Jim and Clint are in the fields, planning how to harvest, with a broken combine. The job will take them two or three weeks to do by hand. Once they finish planning, Jim asks about Brooke, which makes him really uncomfortable. Clint answers that they were in a relationship, and although everyone expected them to get married, he felt it wasn't right. He preferred to wait on God's timing, so he broke up with her and buried the ring, as we saw at the beginning. Jim believes him, but of course, he doesn't want Grace to get hurt, so he trusts in God's guidance upon Clint to make a decision. While having dinner, Brooke tries so hard to draw Clint's attention, but he is paying more attention to Grace. Jim announces that the crop is ready to be harvested, Clint is taking the week off to help, and as an added incentive, Jim claims that if they get it in time, they could host the harvest festival. Suddenly, Clint gets a call, so he apologizes, thanks for the dinner, and goes outside to answer the phone. Brooke takes the opportunity to go after and seduce him, but Clint explains that he is now in a relationship. He apologizes, gets in his car, and leaves. The next day, while the entire family is working on the crops, Clint shows up driving the combine. The call he had received was from a friend, who fixed the machine. Everyone is happy because the harvest festival will be carried out. At the festival, people are enjoying meals, playing music, and having a great time. When Jim announces the trap shooting competition, many people participate, even Brooke, who tries to impress Clint, unsuccessfully. Suddenly, Jared shows up at the festival, and as fate would have it, he bumps into Brooke. After some flirting, Brooke says that she is there because Clint is her fiancé, and she wants him back, so Jared takes this opportunity to create a plan. Brooke heads to Grace, and says that her father is calling for her in the shop. Grace leaves, and Brooke remains there with Clint, but when Grace gets to the shop, she finds no one but Jared. Grace is disgusted with his presence. He tries to win her back by giving her a necklace as a present, but Grace says she is not interested. She says that's not the kind of love she wants. At the same time, Jim appears where Brooke and Clint are, so he realizes that Brooke lied. Clint also clarifies that they are no longer together, and goes to find Grace. Jim sees the situation and follows Clint. Back in the shop, Jared tries to convince Grace that Clint is still in love with Brooke, but she doesn't buy his lies, and leaves. However, Jared grabs her violently, but at that instant, Clint arrives to protect her. Jared takes a shovel and attacks Clint. They get into a fight, but Grace's father appears, and no one gets hurt. Finally, Jim expels both Jared and Brooke from his property. Jared leaves, but Brooke claims that she is not leaving without what she wants, so Clint goes with her, and apologizes. Grace is now crying, heartbroken and confused. While having lunch, Jim tells Grace that although things didn't go as planned, she can still trust Clint. Catherine encourages her to write to him, and be thankful for what they had together. Grace decides to text him to thank him for defending her, and for everything they have experienced together. She is satisfied with Christ's decision to bring them together, and in the end, she feels he is a true friend. But before receiving the message, Clint had dug out the box with the ring. The following day, Grace and her family go on a mountain excursion. Once there, the father grills some food, while Catherine and the boys set up the table. Grace is alone, sitting on a rock, appreciating the beautiful landscape. All of a sudden, Clint appears, and Grace can't believe her eyes, she is cheerful. Clint then explains that he planned that with Jim's help, but he actually believes that God planned their love story. Clint kneels and takes something out of his pocket. He says that he wants to be with her for the rest of his life, and proposes marriage to her. Grace happily accepts, and they join in an endless hug. After the marriage proposal, they join Grace's family, who are really proud and congratulates them. Some years later, we see Grace and Clint sharing their own piece of heaven. They are now a family, and they have a little daughter. Grace gives Clint the soybeans that her father had given her some years ago. Grace has finally planted God's seeds, and has found the true eternal love she was always looking for.